Hey everybody, welcome to Cajun Living and Cooking. My name is Rodney Dupree and today with me I have Holly Pilgrim. And we got something really new for y'all. With nothing going on in the world, we've created some cooking classes now and it's going to be at Galvis Hardware and tonight is our first class and we got some really cool stuff coming up tonight, Holly. Yeah. We're cutting vegetables, we're cutting fruit, we're making roux, we're making two kinds of roux. We're doing rice balled and steamed we're doing dirty rice, we got hamburgers, parfait, and so much more. So hang on, Cajun Living and Cooking is fixing to start right about now. Tide line, trout line, sitting on a pipeline, waiting for the sun to shine. Snap beans, red beans, cornbread, and mustard greens, that's how we live and it sure feels fine. Like the dead long ago So join the fun Live off the land Cause there ain't nothing better Than a Louisiana man Top line, trap line Sitting on a pipeline Waiting for the sun to shine Snap beans, red beans Cornbread, mustard greens That's how we live And it sure feels fine Hey everybody, I'm here today with... I'm Holly Pilgrim. And uh, we'll tell you a little bit about Holly. She is the wife of the owner of the Galvis Hardware Store, and she's from... Well, I was born in Donaldsonville, but I've been in Gonzales for the last 12 years. And you've been cooking for a while. Yeah, 30 years since I got married. You've raised the kids <laughs> up already with your yeah. cooking. Yes, and, and now I have my grandchildren, so yeah. Now that's when it's fun to cook. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I've been cooking, I guess, since I was about 18 years old, living with my grandma, and that's where I first learned uh, about some of the things we're working on today, be it uh, I come home one night and I'm at my grandma's house ready to eat something up. I'm 18 years old and I go in the refrigerator and I look in the refrigerator and I thought it's pudding. Actually, I thought it was brownies. And I reach in there and grab it and I'm like, all right. And I grab me a spoon and I put it in my mouth. It was roux. She was saving some roux in the refrigerator, so after that I figured out, well, I better learn how to cook or I'm going to be eating roux raw the rest of my life. Porsche's Sausage, located in French Settlement, is bringing back that old country smokehouse flavor and customer service. This third generation family, dating back to 1946, has all your favorites. Hall cracklings, beef jerky, head cheese, and smoked sausage. Like the old days of Donald Porsche, our on-site butcher has all your specialties. Smoked Tasso and Hawks, Andouille, Meat Sticks, and Uncle D's Bayou Blend. Come and experience Porsche's Sausage. It's a wonderful Hey, thing. everybody. How's it going? I'm Rodney Dupree. And I'm Holly Pilgrim. And I'm going to tell y'all what. This is something really neat. Due to COVID, with um, not much going on in the world of festivals, fairs, and cooking contests, we started a cooking class at Galvis Hardware. And this is not your normal class where you get a certificate or go to work at a five-star restaurant when it's over. This class, you're going to learn Cajun cooking the way we do it. Learn history of our food and facts about our food. It's Thursday nights, 10 weeks in a row, starting July 22nd to September 23rd from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. and the class is only $40 with six to eight menu items for each class and so much more that's not listed, but only 12 spots for each class. So if you want to get in, you better sign up now. You can check us out on Facebook at Cajun Living and Cooking or at Galvis Hardware and Outdoor Cooking. And we'll see you in the class. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. First thing we're going to do is, I'm sure me and Holly's going to cut it different. So we're going to take our green bell pepper and we're going to start cutting it. And uh, I'm going to show you what my wife taught me on the bell pepper. I took the top off and I took the sides off. And then what I do is break it in half and you can roll it. Because it's always hard to get the membrane out the inside. So if you do that you end up knocking all the membrane off of them and 
you end up with just clean pepper, you know. So, and you save these parts too. You take the tops off, you're going to end up cutting around the inside. But once you get to this part, you'll take this and cut it into matchsticks, basically. And once you get them in matchsticks, you'll cut them, dice them. And once you do that, you've got cut pepper in. So, pretty simple way to cut a pepper. And, and and that's that's how I originally, and then my wife showed me this trick, and I'm like, man, this is cool. I'm through with a pepper before I can even turn around. Mm -hmm. We're gonna move on to an onion. I'm gonna put the trash bucket between us so you can throw yours in too. Now onion, I've seen them do many a different ways. Um, most way I've seen them, and I really don't go around looking at people cutting onions anyway. I've just been cutting them myself. So I cut the root off, and then I cut the stem off. And what I do is I make a little incision right here, and at that point I'm peeling it. So once I'm through peeling it, I got everything off of it. I'm ready for the onion. And, and like I said, this is how I do it. I cut it like this, and then I go down the side, and I'm sure there's a million ways. I've seen them on TV and the cooking shows do different ways, and this way works the best for me, and I end up dicing them. And once you go through, you're gonna have a few to fall out, a few to fall around, and you chop a few up, but there you have it, diced onion. And the next would be the celery. And most of the time, you, you won't use the whole celery. Most recipes are calling for about three, usually. And what I do is I take this old crazy end off, the root end, and I'm cutting the other end. And at this point, you would wash it. But for TV purposes, I'm gonna give it a good wipe right here because this uh, celery grows on the outside and uh, all the trash is right in it. So uh, what I do is I shoot right down the middle on them to cut them in half basically. And once I'm through the middle, and you might see a few parts, pieces here and there to take off, but um, then it's lined up and then basically you're ready to dice it. So, no real scientific theory to it, but once it's cut, there you have it. Diced celery ready to go in. Okay. And all you're doing is cutting both ends. And I'm going to do it as you would the maripois, which is, to me, cutting it in half with Mr. Carrot. And... And at that point, it looked like the big end, I'd cut it again if I'm trying to dice. Yeah. And this is a sharp knife too, y'all. Very. Look at there. So I'm ready to dice them now. And I guess people at home taking their time will sit there and do one at a time, you know. But I learned from sausage. Well, you can get on down with sausage. I can do three in a row and get it going. But yeah. which is the same thing you'll end up with the same product. And I'm gonna cut a few. And you can cut smaller or larger, depending on the recipe that you're using. So I'm not gonna waste your time cutting carrots. Something I'd like to say, and uh, it's pretty neat that we're using all this produce. I got three shout outs I gotta give. Uh, number one to Capital City Produce for bringing the produce to us and uh, sponsoring. Great stuff, very great stuff. If you're not using Capital City Produce at your stand or at your market, you know, that's, that's what you need because this is top quality. Also, I'd like to talk about DS Tire. Um, they have two locations, but here on 42 is uh, Derek Diaz who runs it and they got a great staff over there. Ed runs the front and anything you need, car, uh, be it tires, brakes or whatever, DS Tire will fix you up. And the other one I want to talk about is Leader's Fried Chicken. And y'all, 
that's the best fried chicken you'll ever have and they have more things than that too they got the red beans is really good they got the fried chicken that's really good uh i love the fried chicken gizzards that's just my gig uh but i'm gonna tell you as far as um chicken goes there is nothing better around here than there so i'd like to say thank y'all for sponsoring the cooking class so y'all hang on we're gonna take a little break and uh we're gonna come back to maybe a little more cutting or we're fixing to get cooking too Dreams Come True of Louisiana is a nonprofit organization that grants dreams to Louisiana children between ages 3 and 18 with a life threatening illness. Dreams Come True was founded in 1982 by seven families in Denham Springs with a goal of providing dreams to children. All funding was initially provided by those families. Dreams Come True is proud to have one paid employee and provides dreams throughout the state of Louisiana. Dreams Come True provides an average of 65 to 70 dreams per year. Visit our website for more information, dctofla.com. Fred's Bar on the River has something for everyone. Open seven days a week. Football on the big screen TV, pool tables, golf, darts, and the new boat launch bar. Ladies night on Wednesdays. Thursdays is open mic night. Karaoke on Fridays with DJ Rocky. Live bands on Saturday and Sundays. The Giant River Bar is air-conditioned and ready to book your company's events or your Christmas parties. Come out and enjoy a good time on the river. Galvez Hardware and Outdoor Cooking has the largest selection of grills and outdoor cooking supplies in South Louisiana. Let our team help you select the right equipment for your cooking needs. Our unique inventory of cookware is second to none. Whether you are looking for a new cast iron or ceramic coated pot and burner, a new charcoal, gas, or pellet grill, or anything to help you with your outdoor cookout, come to Galvez Hardware because good food brings people together. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, y'all. We are now cooking rice. And uh, like I said earlier, there's a million ways to do it. And Holly's going to cook steamed rice, and she's going to get started right now, which is two cups of long grain rice, three cups of water, a tablespoon of salt, and a tablespoon of butter. And uh, this isn't the exact traditional where you use half to half, you know, but uh, what you're doing is combining all the ingredients in a large pot with a heavy bottom and over medium-high heat. We're going to bring it to a rolling ball and at the rolling ball you're going to stir it you're going to cover it and you're going to reduce the heat and you're not going to touch that lid for 30 minutes you're going to want to you're going to want to start you're going to want to touch it. once you get it on low and it's in there don't touch it just let it go for 30 minutes so the second rice we're doing is a balled rice and i i don't remember where i learned this but uh what i do is put a whole bunch of water in there and and really getting it balled and putting it in there at the same time it really don't matter i'm putting the rice in there which i got extra water i'm putting two cups of rice hope i got a spoon somewhere around here yeah and uh i've got vinegar and salt so there's my salt one teaspoon and one teaspoon of vinegar and um one thing you never do is stir your rice once it's balling all right, here we are. We got rice going. She's going. She's already moving to low. I'm fixing to get mine balling. And we will have some rice very soon. And then we're going to make some dirty rice. And I'm really excited about this dirty rice. It's a recipe I made a couple times. But uh, let's get our rice going. Y'all hang on. All right, y'all. We got uh, rice cooked uh, now. So two different ways, too. Now we're going to keep going with the dirty rice so as holly's mixing these together she's going to put uh cajun seasoning which uh i use uncle larry's i've used other things too but uh she's got the cajun seasoning uh louisiana hot sauce and worcestershire so she's going to mix all that together combine that and then from that point we're going to put it into the big skillet with some oil, about a tablespoon of oil, and we're gonna brown this down. You want this uh, medium to high, medium, medium to high. I'm gonna put some oil in there. And 
I have the Holy Trinity going here. Celery, peppers, and onions. I got a half a cup of all three. Okay, she's sweating this down. We cooking the onions. We're gonna start combining this in just a little bit. So here we go. All right, Holly, we got it going on now. Okay. We got the meat brown. We got the Holy Trinity brown. We're ready to combine. So now we're gonna dump the Holy Trinity into the meat. Maybe you'll knock that off of there for me. And you drain the meat, right? The meat has been drained because we use an 80-20, which you want the fat in there. But when you through cooking the meat, you take the fat back out of it. As soon as we get some bubble, I am going to, we're going to go ahead and add the green onions and the parsley, which gives it a little color and a little bit of flavor in there. I'm going to combine that. This is a good part now. We're going to put one cup of chicken stock and the finale is two cups of cooked rice. And this was the one we boiled. And uh, it's split and it come out pretty good. Now for the hard part, Holly. You got to get her all combined in yeah. there. A lot of ingredients. A lot of good stuff in there. Tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna get it stirred up. We're gonna put it in a plate and we're gonna have somebody test some of this while we start on something else. So, uh, dirty rice, another way. Man, that rice dressing sure was good. Came out good. And we got another recipe for y'all. And uh, I'm gonna tell you what we got going while uh, Holly's getting this going. And we doing the two big old giant skillet style. One here, she's gonna be putting some oil, maybe a tablespoon of oil in each one. And uh, I'm gonna tell y'all, and this is my recipe that I've come up with through the years, um, as far as what I like. I put, I call it toasted oats or quick oats, really. So I'm putting two pounds of ground meat. I put three quarter cup of toasted oats, two eggs, two tablespoons of Uncle Larry's Cajun seasoning, one tablespoon of Worcestershire, tablespoon of hot sauce, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of pepper. And uh, it really makes a juicy burger, and it's good on the grill, but also on the pit. I make a nice size patty. Um, now, what we're gonna do is a test. Them three on that one, we're gonna see what happens with them guys, but you'll see a lot of folks talk about that dimple. So what I'll do, and they say about a quarter hole, and you want that to sit on the side, so the burger, we're gonna get to see what really happens with this, with that little dimple. And see if it puffs up as much as a regular burger. Now, how are we looking over here? These look fine. I just didn't think that these were ready, you think? Gotcha. I'm going to do that old shake and bake. Yeah. Let's put a little grease over on that side. We got that going. I mean, these aren't done on the... No, I would say... And, and, and I've read several different things on... Um, as a matter of fact, I actually put something on here somewhere about the times. And as a matter of fact... 120 on the inside is medium 130 is medium well uh no 120 is rare 130 is medium well medium rare and then medium is 140 medium well is 150 and done is 160. so i don't know too many people that eat rare burgers i don't think i want rare burger but i like my burger done I like it off the grill too now. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's pretty, pretty, pretty. You, put the dimple side up. you start with the dimple side up is what we've done too. And it looks like it's changed it a little bit because it's not puffing in the middle. Whereas the ones we didn't do the dimple is a little more oval in the middle. Yeah. All right. Okay, here's what we're gonna do, Holly. We're gonna finish this up. We're gonna get some buns out. We're gonna 
get some burgers together and we're gonna taste some. I'm hungry. Y'all hang on. The new completely renovated Fred's on the River Food Mark located at the Port Vincent Bridge is now back open and better than ever. With biscuits, coffee, and sandwiches ready every morning at 4.30 to get you started. And a full breakfast menu from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. featuring homemade hash browns, pancakes, eggs, and our country-style biscuits and gravy. Our newly renovated store has all your needs from local vendors, plus cold beer, lottery, gas, and tobacco. Try our new lunch and dinner menu featuring our famous boat launch burger, overstuffed New Orleans-style pressed po' boys, 100% beef hamburgers, pizza, and by far the best onion strings you have ever tasted. So come by and enjoy Fred's on the River Food Mart, where we've come back bigger and better than ever, but we haven't lost our hometown feel. Corral fish season is coming soon. It's time to move into the 21st century with the new high-performance cookers and super boilers. With our new state-of-the-art technology, the 120-quart pots come to a boil in under 7 minutes and the return boil in under 2 minutes. This fast return boil is key to perfectly cooked crawfish, all while using far less propane. Now, no more mushy crawfish using the old, outdated slow boilers. Monogramming Unlimited specializes in corporate and small business embroidery on a wide variety of clothing and accessories like shirts, jackets, hats, bags, and much more. Our screen printing department is perfect for you. A very affordable way to advertise your business, club, team, or event. We also handle business cards, promotional items like pins and huggies, trophies, medals, plaques, banners, and signs. No job is too big or too small. Call or come by today. You're watching Cajun Living and Cooking. All right, Holly. Man, that burger was, they loving that burger out there. Yeah. And the, that dirty rice come out good. They, they nailing the burger. But now for the encore. Tell us about your cake. Okay, this is a yellow sheet cake, and um, just for time purposes, I'm just going to tell you the ingredients in it today. It has... Um, one cup of unsalted butter, which is two sticks. Uh. Two cups of self-rising flour. Two cups of sugar. Two large eggs. A half a cup of sour cream. Oh, wow. And one teaspoon of almond extract. And we're going to put that on Cajun Living and Cooking Facebook so they can get all these recipes we have from the, from the Facebook. But, um... We're fixing to do something pretty cool with the cake. So if you want to start putting us a little piece, and we're going to start with um, something I've seen here and there. You, you might want to call it a parfait. You may not um, because it's pretty cool stuff that we got going. And uh, it's, it's, it's a three layer two layer, five layer, one layer. It's a bunch of layers in there. And uh, we're putting the white on it now. Boy, that looks good there already. And then you put some of that cream on it. And let me, I, and I got, I'll tell you what, you put, look at that all over there. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> and we're gonna put the cake back on it now. Okay. And then a little more. Ah, a little more to filling. And man, you may have to go into a food coma once you eat one of these. And then we go with the whipped cream on the top again. And I'm going to tell you, ah, that, what y'all think? Looking good? Looking good? That's, uh, it's parfait kicked up a notch somewhat. And you can get crazy with this, y'all. You can put nuts, slivered almonds. And then we got another cool one we're going to show you. That this is one we're going to do the cake. And then we have some lemon filling and the whipped cream. And while she's working on that, I got something a little bit crazy I'm working with. Um, as we were doing parfaits, untraditional parfaits, I think this would be untraditional because um, it's untraditional 
as a matter of fact. So what I got is a parfait cup. Not really, looks like possibly a wine glass, but what I got going is some croutons and we're gonna go with some tomato in there. And then you come back with cucumber on top. Now, everybody loves ranch dressing. Well, guess what? You get to put that in there, parfait style, little ranch dressing in there. And some more crouton. This is good for you too, unless you eat 16 of them. And you put a little more in there. Some more of this on top. Look at there. And some ranch. And you can at this point kick a little bit of salt and pepper on there if you like it, but that would make it a little unhealthy. But that's a vegetable parfait. And uh, sky's the limit on these, like I was saying. Um, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let's put a little piece of cake. How about Reese's cup? And we'll go with some cream. A little caramel. We'll put a little bit of cake on top of that. <laughs> Don't try that at home unless you call me. Um, Where we add a little more whipped cream. Let's go with some more of that. We'll put that on top. We're going to add this dude right here. Get a spoon. And um, I'm thinking we could put some of these sprinkles, but looks like it'd be tougher for me to open it right now to get them sprinkles going. And you might not need that, but we're going to drizzle it one more time. We're dribbling and drizzling it in. That's it right there. That that, that that's um uh, I think that's what killed Elvis. I'm not <laughs> sure. Okay. He should have been eating these. But uh I tell you what, Holly, I had a good time making some I mean, it's been way longer than what we wanted to do and it takes a while to do all these ingredients and uh I, I had a blast and uh I think we'll do it again. Okay. I want to tell y'all out there, thanks for watching Cajun Living and Cooking, and we'll see you next week.